Well, it's the end of the week. It's Friday. And I want to open up God's Word today and read from Psalm 20. And the beauty of Psalm 20 is it really is a prayer. So I, I, I invite you as you listen to these words to actually make this your prayer. Here's Psalm 20. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from his sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. That's the holy hill, the place that God dwelled. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. What a beautiful prayer. Would you make that your prayer that you would say, God, I'm crying out to you. I trust in you. I don't demand what you should do, but would you ask for God's presence and God's power and God's hand to work in your life? I want to encourage you to remember that God is a God of victory. He loves to bring victory. So bring your needs and bring your burdens and bring your joys and say, God, be glorified in my life. Be victorious in my life for the sake and the name of Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me? Oh God, we trust in you. We place our trust in you, our confidence. Let us know that you are a God who brings victory and glory to your own name and that you watch over your children. Remind us of your presence, your power as we walk in your victory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today you're going to get a little update from a local doctor in the Monterey area who also happens to be the vice president of your church board here at Shoreline Church. I'd like to hear a few words from Dr. Rick Alexander. Hey, good morning, Shoreliners. Um, wanted to give you a little medical update first on what's happening with the COVID-19 virus in uh, our local community. First and foremost, I want to let you know that we're really blessed to live in Monterey. Currently in Monterey proper, we have no uh, documented COVID-19 uh, patients. I say documented because uh, we believe that there are some patients in uh, in our community they probably do have COVID-19, but either their symptoms are so mild or they're completely asymptomatic and, and uh, they haven't been tested yet. But in terms of what's happening at Community Hospital, uh, in particular, I wanna let you know, we have a, a very uh, strong staff and strong leadership. Um, the uh, website uh, at the hospital uh, is accessible and you would uh, get really good updates there. Uh, our CEO, Dr. Stephen Packer, is really ahead of the curve on getting the hospital up and ready for COVID-19. Um, specifically, uh, patients that feel that they need to be screened are initially being screened in tents outside the hospital, and uh, many times they um, actually won't need hospitalization. Uh, for those of you who are at home, uh, even if you've heard this information, I'll repeat it. If you think you have the cold or flu, uh, you should stay at home. You shouldn't come to the hospital. You should only come to the hospital if you're having respiratory difficulties. That's the key. Uh, unfortunately, we're in the middle of a flu season now, so the vast majority of people who come down with symptoms of body aches and temperature and fever actually just have the uh, community flu, not the COVID-19. COVID-19 is particularly different in that a certain percentage, uh, perhaps as high as 20% of patients, have uh, respiratory difficulties, specifically difficulty breathing. If that happens, then certainly you should be seen uh, at the hospital. What they are recommending first, however, is that you contact your primary care provider before going up to community hospital. Currently, as of last night, there are four patients that are COVID positive. Uh, two were screened initially at um, Natividad, and they are at uh, home isolation. Uh, there are two other patients that have uh, screened positive um, at Salinas Valley and at least one of those has been hospitalized. Um, as of yesterday, we had done over 100 screens in Monterey and proper, and uh, those are the only four that have been positive. Because we have uh, limited ability to test, that's why uh, we're being asked uh, now as of last night as a state to shelter in place. Um, but uh, 
you know, until we get a universal screening, we don't know when that's going to be. Uh, we want to have people shelter in place. One of the things I would recommend to you as a doctor is that you be very careful about your sources of information. And I wanted to give you some, some recommendations on uh, where you can find up-to-date, accurate um, medical information. The first of those is uh, the website at the CDC. Um, they're providing uh, up-to-date, uh, very important information that is reliable. Uh, the second source of information uh, would be our local news station, KION. They've done a good job and they're on top of local information uh, regarding COVID and um, what we're doing as a local community. The third source is actually Community Hospital. Uh, CHOMP's uh, website has great information for you. And lastly, and maybe most importantly, is Shoreline's website. And uh, Kevin is, uh, Pastor Kevin is giving updates on what we're doing at, at Shoreline and giving really good uh, biblical uh, inspiration. And I wanted to talk about that for a minute too. You know, all this news is not bad. I mean, I was uh, reflecting just this morning. I said, you know, now that we're supposed to shelter at home, shelter in place, um, some people are thinking, that's the worst thing ever. You mean I've gotta be around my family? Um, and really, come on, this is an opportunity for us to really grow as individuals, as families, um, and actually spending time together. Um, when do you get to do that other than on vacation? And then usually when we're on vacation, we have all these distractions. Well, guess what? We don't have much to be distracted by now. And I think it gives us a great opportunity to start our day in the Word, reading the Bible, praying as a family, and looking for God to guide us through this unique um, challenge in our lives. And this isn't something that's new to God. All you have to do is look in the Old Testament. And there were lots of plagues, lots of challenges, lots of wars, lots of times of turmoil. And guess what? Every time, God was faithful to his people. And the people, through God, conquered whatever obstacle was in their way. And so I just really want to encourage you that uh, this is a very unique time. Maybe the, the most unprecedented time in your entire life. And I think it gives us a great opportunity to grow in our faith, share our faith, and, and grow as a family. A family, uh, a biologic family, but also as a family of believers. And don't miss out on that. And I also think it gives us an opportunity as a church, a very unique opportunity to serve the needs of our community. And I know talking with Pastor Kevin, the food pantry, the clothing closet, these are ministries that are approved to continue. And they're gonna be more valuable in the, in the, in the weeks to come. You know, one of the things that um, I think we could really miss out on that God's presented us with is really an opportunity to unite as a community, as a nation, and as a world. And we have this opportunity to foster mutual cooperation. And really, the, that opportunity, I hope, isn't lost on us. And we may never get this type of opportunity again. When talking about the, this uh, COVID uh, pandemic, I think I see two, two types of reactions, two extremes. One is, um, I'm on spring break and I'm not gonna pay any attention. And the other extreme is, oh my gosh, the world's coming to an end and I'm panicked. I think both those extremes are what I just said, extremes. And really what I wanna focus on is that, yes, this is a pandemic, but it is a bad flu. It's not the plague, but it is something that we need to be very, very mindful of. And for that reason, I wanna encourage everybody to follow the recommendations of the CDC, of the governor, and please shelter in place. This is gonna be critically important to stopping the spread of this virus. And one of the things that I wanna let people know too is that this virus is going to go away. People ask me all the time, 
Well, how long is this gonna be? Is it gonna be two weeks? Is it gonna be a month? Well, in fact, we don't know specifically, but I will tell you that in general, it will probably, in my opinion, be two or three, maybe four months. I think we're gonna see declining numbers of cases by the summer. And by this time next year, with praise God, I hope uh, we have a vaccine. Um, and so I think that's what we're looking at. And one good piece of news is when you look at what's happening in China, they've had a significant deceleration in uh, the COVID virus. People are going back to work. And in Hunan province, where the virus was first detected, actually back in November, there had been no new cases for the last 72 hours. So this is something that will run its course. But in the meantime, we have to be very mindful, we have to be very responsible, and we have to follow the recommendations by our local government and healthcare providers. So in conclusion, I'd really encourage people, don't miss out on this opportunity to love and care for your family, love and care for your church, and love and care for our local community. Thanks very much.